Hi, that'll be your entry. We have a new episode in the Art Podcast series. This is actually my second take because, uh, yeah, my my first recording just cut off. So I was basically talking for like 10 minutes and uh, it's gone now. So anyway, I can start again and that's what I'm doing now. So my last episode was about nine days ago as of this recording. And I was supposed to, I, I do plan on doing like a podcast episode on YouTube like every week, like once a week at least. It's a way to kind of recap and uh, just have a discussion and not like focus on, you know, creating some kind of artwork. Um, it's more of a chill session and I do know that these sorts of episodes, they don't get as much views, but I think it's a great way to just be real and raw and just, you know, right? So anyway, the the main topic here that I really wanted to talk about. Oh, by the way, I will address. I'll try this. I'll talk about like some topics in the beginning, and then I'll have a section where I address the comments from the last podcast episode. Um. Also, yeah. So let me just uh, hide this because, or minimize it because uh, it's gonna be confusing. So I'm gonna redo this discussion again. Right. We'll say 15. There you go. We'll make a new layer. Right. Oh. There it is. Okay. So hopefully everything is good. And yeah, the main topic here is knowing what your core is. Uh, let me just use my trusty pen here. Oh, yeah. Knowing what your core is. Right. So I'm basically tracing over my previous notes here. You need to know what your core is. Now, what is your core? Your core is like the thing that remains after everything else. Um, and re in regards to like, you know, in living or living this kind of creative life, if you're an artist, uh, I'm assuming that's like, that, that's the, the vast majority of my viewers here and subscribers. Um, you need to know what your core is because there are a lot of things that can, like if you're not careful, for example, there's some, I'll call this the exterior. Right? Things on the outside. Like, imagine a circle. And, uh, shit, let me just use yellow again. Right? We'll call this you. Right? This is your personality, your person, your character. And your core is obviously the thing in the middle. It's the nipple of life. Right? So that's the core. Um, And this whole thing. The boob. Right? Everything within that circle is um, the interior. We'll call, we'll call it the interior, right? And the interior is more of a professional way or a more formal way of saying it's you. Right? It's your person, it's your character. right? And the core is actually something even more sort of specific within that um, interior. So the point is, when you have things going outside of you, for example, uh, maybe it's the, the opinions of others. Uh, it's usually that, maybe the comments you get or the criticisms you receive. Um, even the way things, like whenever you put something out there, and maybe, for example, in my case, sometimes I don't get the views that I think I should. Um, and even if I'm fully aware that whenever you, I think you should know this by now if you do any kind of, like if you, if you post anything online, whether like your artwork, videos, any kind of content, there's usually going to be like a wave. Uh, sometimes you get a lot of attention and then sometimes you get you'll get no attention. Um, and you will never have that kind of consistent base of uh, views. And that's why you see a lot of like people try different things to kind of, uh, or challenges. They'll do like challenges and stuff like that too. Um, kind of bump up their attention. So people are more likely to see their work. And that's a result of uh, understanding that you're not going to get consistent. Like, you have to adapt and you need to be able to fish for some uh, attention. Um, and that can lead to a lot of, like, a lot of like, crazy stuff on uh, YouTube, Twitter, uh, TikTok, and stuff like that. But the point is, if you're not careful and, and you don't know what your core is, like, this thing can take over and really sort of ruin everything that's about you, that's about you right? It can ruin your self-esteem, your self-confidence. Um, and I think when, you, when you're trying to find your core, you need to draw a line, right? You need to say uh, no when something has to stop, 
right? If something goes here, it stops here. It doesn't go any uh, further. If it does, it's like a trickle down, a piss version to the point where it doesn't really affect you anymore, right? So if a waterfall of like shit comes at you, you want to end up with like droplets of, eh, of minor inconveniences. And I think that's what having a core means and knowing what your core is. I think this is kind of a, a therapy concept. I, I saw this or heard this from a, a different person in a, a video. Uh, but the point is like you, you need to know what your core is because you can be so easily affected by uh, what's said about you or about the things that are happening to you. Anything that's uh, outside of your person uh, can and will affect you, but uh, it's almost unstoppable at, at that point. But a way to mitigate that is having this core. You can think of core as your like center, right? So let me just give you another example. For example, if you're an artist, obviously it's going to be your like passion for this thing. For me specifically, for example, I keep saying, for example, for example, for example, for example. <laughs> so, sorry. I have this series on YouTube called The Art Reviews. And it's my most popular playlist. It also serves as a way for me to kind of fall in love again. Oh, yeah. With art. Because whenever I feel down, it's like so easy to do an art review. Because all I have to do is pick an artist that interests me at that moment. And I can just and I can just hit record and start uh, trying to break down their work or see and just talk about their work basically. And every time I do that, I just feel a bit more energized. And I think that has been a, a center, a core in my work. Whenever I scroll through Twitter or X or on YouTube, any kind of social media platform or, or art station, right? Um, I end up having multiple tabs open because I keep I keep hitting the open link in new tab so um i just can't help but if i like the artwork if it interests me in some way you know i just like uh, seeing it exploring it trying to you know i like breaking it down or just i like appreciating it even more because as much as i like making art i also like looking at art because it's very enjoyable for me and i think having that has sort of sustained me uh despite like any doubts from the outside that has served as my center so you need to know what those things are this will vary from person to person but uh knowing what your core is or what's in your core what's in your center it's basically anything it's like it's what's left after everything has been said like what remains after all the the shite right that's probably your center like if you're so tired of like eventually if you like if you get tired of um you know like doubting yourself or if you're just tired of all the the nonsense, the noise, eventually you will reach a point where you're, where you're sort of numbed to everything. And whatever is left, I think that's your core or that's your center. And sometimes it takes a while for you to realize it. Like you need to like to, to find what your core or center is. You need to sort of experience what's on the outside. So... Um, like the more shit is th thrown at you, like the more you realize what part of you is not shit. Oh, quotable. Um, and yeah, and I also want to add this as well, the interior part, because as much as the exterior can affect you negatively or positively, but in this case, negatively, your interior, like yourself can also affect your core. Like you still need to separate yourself, not just from the exterior side, but from the interior side. So you need to distance yourself from, uh, let me just draw a red here, right? Like this being your core, um, like this, this is your core, right? The center point. This is not your core yet. I mean, it's still you, but again, your you can still have negative, it can still influence what this thing is. It's not what's inside of you. Like you still have you as a person and you have what's inside of you. It's this, Sort of small ball where what's important remains, right? Um, if you can't think of it like a ball, think of it like a corner, right? If you have a wall here, the, the thing here in the end, in the corner, after all this shit, after you're being pushed around and stuff like that, 
your corner. We can also say that. We'll, we'll call it um, corner. Like after all that pressure from the outside, like what remains? What's pushed or what's pushed to the, the corner here? Uh, despite all the pressure, right? Because some will like dissipate and will kind of leave in the crevices. Uh, those are the weaker parts of yourself. Like what's pushed right here? What remains? You need to know what that is and you need to um, um, know what that is. Because um, sometimes this can be too noisy. Sometimes this can even be uh, noisy as well. Uh, what can sort of, again, mitigate that is just knowing what uh, your corner is, what your center is, what your core is. Um, and if you know that, it's just easier to stop that nonsense, that negative. Uh, it's nice if it's all positive, but obviously... Uh, it doesn't really affect you because if you feel good, if, if things on the outside are positive, obviously it makes you feel good. But the thing is, what if it's negative? If you get all this constant shit and you have no idea how to stop it, uh, you're going to end up destroying your core, right? And sometimes when that happens, when you don't even know what your core is, you can sort of be led by what people say about you on the outside and what you say about yourself on the inside. And that can be a very scary thing. And it, it'll end up sort of um, in crisis. It'll end up being lost in some way. And you may even quit. That, and that's a bad thing, obviously, if you're really into art. Um, if you're not aware of this, if you don't, if you don't know what your corner is, uh, or what your center, what your core is, uh, you may end up just quitting. And uh, I don't want that to happen, obviously, for myself and obviously for you as well. So that's just something to consider. Uh, it's a quick sort of uh, therapeutic breakdown. Well, I did say something here. Um, uh, yeah. So obviously, I think a lot of us, or quite a few of us, want to be successful in this whole art thing, right? Um, you want to prioritize uh, or have a sort of hierarchy here. So number one and number two. They're both important. You have to do both for the most part. I think for most people anyway. I think you have to prioritize your love for art first before your success in art because these two things are connected but you have to make that um, separation because if you focus too much on the success in art this can mean for me um, obviously one of my uh, sections in this career or in this lifestyle that I'm trying to build is content creation um and uh, a metric to measure my success is obviously um, not just the art, but it's the, the content creation of that art, you know, like the time lapse videos I make or the, the art reviews and stuff like that. Basically, the, the marketing side. So it, sometimes I fall into the trap of focusing too much on views, um, on engagement. And because when you have like a YouTube channel, you can get this sort of data, so you you you'll see this sort of graph, uh, and you'll see this sort of a wave where it gets higher, right, or when it gets lower. And obviously, when things are kind of dropping down, it doesn't look as good, and it doesn't feel good for me because obviously less views, that means less attention. And if you if you have a monetized channel, obviously that means less money. So the performance of your work, of your product, of the things you put out there. It's gonna affect your self-esteem again to me it affects my self-esteem because sometimes i forget what my core is and because i don't know what it is because i haven't reflected on it and all of this shit sort of just uh seeps in like a dagger right like a anyway so what's useful for me is obviously prioritizing this one even more right my love let me just use red here because it's more appropriate my love oh yeah oh yeah for the thing my love for art and just having this mindset i think helps i'm not saying again you have to do both for most people anyway if you're trying to build like a you know multiple streams of income right uh, because i see lots of people you'll see it in the comments not, not just in my videos but in plenty of other videos where they keep shaming people for you know, like doing content, like, like people want to make, like there are artists who actually want to make money. 
Like there are so many sadly people or artists who still think they have to work in a, a triple A game studio. They need to work in a Hollywood film. They need to sell artwork in like a gallery. And they think that's the only legit way to make money. You know what I mean? And that's so outdated. Like now that we have the internet, internet like we have like so many av avenues to monetize our work. And I think that's something that, you know, we've always had the stereotype of, uh, of being like starving artists, right? Of being poor. And it's just sad that people or more than enough artists are still stuck in this ancient way of thinking. I mentioned this in the past podcast episode. They basically think like boomers. If boomers are really like old people, um, they think art is not a real job. Um, artists, or there are some artists... Who think there are only certain like you need an art job, All right? Let me just do that. Thing. Let me just show you. What the... You need the job. Basically, you need to work for some kind of company or do the classic, sell your stuff in some kind of like auction or gallery. Do you realize how late these people are? I mean, these people these people are no different than boomers, and it honestly it frustrates me. <laughs> um. So for someone who's trying to dabble, uh, it, it, maybe you have like a, a main sh a main income stream, but you want to monetize and do like a side gig when it comes to side gig, um, like do some passive income when it comes to artwork. Um, this is something you need to work more towards so because maybe this is easier for someone who's not pressured, right? If they're just doing it as a hobby and they're kind of just loose with it, it's fine. But for those of you who kind of want to really go for it and be successful um, artistically, but at the same time financially as well, you need to make the separation. You, need, you still need to do both. But I think having this separation really helps. Um, and not just, not just the, the separation, but the prioritization. The love of art, the love for art has to be, has to be the core, I guess. I think that's, uh, that's better. It has to be your core. It has to be your center. It has to be the thing that remains after all the shit has been thrown at you. For example, if you get a lot of like negative comments, uh, you know, all sorts of like negative criticism, basically things that are pulling you down, making you stop. Like after all that noise, what remains is chances are it's going to be your um, love for the thing. Because when, for example, when your views are down, when your money is down, when your sales are down, when your attention is down. This is all like the success part, I guess. That's the, the financial part. It could also mean in terms of your quality. Maybe your artwork is not getting better and you feel like you've stagnated or plateaued in your like art skills. That's also in a way uh, interfering with your success in art. But it's not financial. It's more like artistic development. So after all that negative downward, downward spiral of um, shit them. <laughs> Eventually, you're gonna get um, tired of that and whatever, like after you feel sort of numb to it, like what remains is really, ju really just this thing. And I think I've, I've heard people say that that sort of the, the core of art is it's usually made from, it's kind of corny, but it is true. Uh, it's sort of made from love in a way. And I think just, just thinking about this, it knowing what that core is, knowing that my core is my love for this thing, it's it helps me push through. Um, and it's a better way of uh, moving about this creative realm. So I think this really helps if you're like, um, not just when you're struggling, but when you're feeling good too, always... Try to have, do your best to think about this first, like the love for the thing. For example, I have this series on YouTube called the Art Review Series. And it's actually how I started my channel, just doing art reviews. And I still do it, do it, to, do, do that whole thing till this day. And as much as it's my best performing playlist, um, it's also in a way my fallback. So even if it doesn't perform as well, because it does give me success in a way. But at the same time, it also reminds me of this as well, right? So even if I don't get as much views, I always start from the um, the place from a place where 
I like this artist and I want to talk about it. And that's it. For example, if I'm on Twitter, you know, I'm scroll or next, I'm scrolling and I find an artist I like, I jot down their profile. Same thing, if I, if I find an artist on Pinterest, uh, on ArtStation, maybe on YouTube. If I like someone, if their art is making me feel something and I like it, uh, they get taken down. Uh, I mean, they taken. They get they get taken note of in my like notes. Either they're bookmarked or I just write their name down in some kind of note notepad file. And I think that has saved me. Even though there are you know some some of my videos that I don't even try to like really. Sometimes I feel like I'm lazy in some of them. Uh, those videos sometimes get the most views. Um, so that's kind of funny. Um, but that's more of a side note. The point is, in a way, that is my core. Me appreciating other people's art. And I'm so glad people have noticed it in the comments. It's really, sometimes it's more about just appre appreciating like artists. Especially the ones that don't really get as much uh, like attention. Because everyone knows who the big names are, right? Um, but there are so many like other talent, talent, talented shit artists that uh, don't get as much love and um, they don't get as much attention so it's nice that that I get to contribute to you know giving some of these people some props and being able to introduce them to other artists because I do uh, I'm inspired by a lot of different kinds of artists and um, you know I, I do have a, a diverse audience obviously all have an interest in art but when it comes to style when it comes to like the subject matter it does it is kind of diverse some are into concept art some are into more like anime um and th those th those are like the two main sort of demographics i guess uh, and usually it's a bit of both and that has been my core that has been my uh center um so even if the views are down for like that playlist <sighs> having that mindset of just like each video always has that kind of core like this artist i want to talk about this guy this artist and whatever happens happens and i was listening to this so let me just before that before that let me just drink some water because i'm so dehydrated uh. sorry i was listening to this guy i think his name is knee something n-e-e -E, or l-e-e -E, i'm not sure knee lee who knows but uh, he, he used to work for Proco. It's a big art channel. And uh, when he used to work there, he noticed that there were some videos that they really did put the the effort in. Like they spent like a, m a month maybe or weeks really working on that, on that video, doing the editing, doing like all of the necessary stuff. But sometimes when they post a video, it doesn't get as much views and it's a very low performing video. And obviously there are times when they, you know, do put the effort in and the the video succeeds. But the point is, I think he was, he was trying to make that their team, the Proka team, basically treats every video like they have this concept called, I guess, uh, it's called outcome independence. Like despite it doesn't really matter what happens after or it doesn't matter what the outcome is, like you're going to be independent of it. So you always have this sort of routine system. And you do that, you do all of that, but whatever happens, happens. And I think that's the kind of mentality they have. And I think this is kind of like all of this is pretty much the same thing. Or it, it's kind of related to that where you just do do your thing and uh, whatever happens, happens. But that's more of an active sort of uh, action that you can uh, apply this cool concept on, right? So, for example, going back to the art reviews, like... I always start with that, like, do I like this artist? Yes. Do I like their artwork? Yes. Do I want to like, explore it and, you know, do a video along with it to um, do a bit of both, you know, introduce an artist to someone, to my audience, but but at the same time, you know, I personally have the satisfaction of being able to kind of run through their portfolio. And having that base, having that core initial base of doing those videos um, even if the videos end up not doing as well, I always have that satisfaction. I always have, like, my core, my corner, my center is always filled up. And I think that's a more healthier way of, um, uh, doing this whole thing. 
So I guess that's the main takeaway. Just know what your core is, know what your center is. Um, like after the world has pushed you into the corner, like this whole thing that's been pressured into this one singular point, uh, that's going to be you. That's going to be your core. And you want to really protect it. Like you want to stop the shit from entering it. And uh, I think that's going to help you be more sustainable because there will always be like things uh, going against you. Right, whether it be from your own voices or the the voices of others, right? It's not it's not it's not always about a voice. Basically, any kind of stimulus um, outside of this core, maybe from your own person, right, or from other people. So what helps is just knowing what this is, and you re you re you really want to protect it like it's some kind of child. Um, and I think it's even more important for. Uh, us creative types because we tend to be a bit more emotional I've noticed not always a good thing there is a, a drawback to that there are cons for example when it comes to again let me just you know underline this that's not a real job content creation is not a real job you know like Jesus like you're you're just you're dumb <laughs> you're no different than the like you're so outdated basically so my recommendation for you uh, brothers and sisters is to be more open-minded like learn to adjust with the times and stop like being so mentally behind <laughs> and um, yeah so know what your core is and learn to separate that from the exterior basically people outside of you and learn to separate your core as well from the interior or your own like your other thoughts your other your other perspectives you need to know that thing that remains after all the shit after all the pressure like who are you when you're pinned into a corner who are you when things are not going your way who are you when you've gotten all the shit thrown at you like what what is this who are you what is your center what's in your corner what is your core right and obviously again start from love gotta start from love and again it's not an either or just make sure you start from here and then you once you have this base figured out then you on top of that then you can work on your success then you can start um concerning yourself on you know like your artistic ability are, are you improving are you getting better when it comes to your own like technical ability are you doing better content if you're doing some marketing or if you're putting yourself out there um, but you can worry about th these things after you've done it out of love. You, you have to make sure that that's your... Um, like you want to prioritize that first. Because if you do that, I think it's going to be more sustainable to do this thing. And you won't end up being lost. Because that's sort of a thing in the the art community, right? Uh, where pe people just sort of burn out. And the thing is because they got caught up with the whole business side i'm not saying don't do business you have to do business but don't get caught up in it don't let it be the number one thing let it be the secondary thing both are important both are required but just change the um uh the steps right this being number one and then this being number two again not either or it's not black and white it's just more of a a hierarchy a hierarchy thing start here and then work your way uh, here and that's it so hopefully you learned something from this um, whole lesson of mine oh yeah um yeah that's it so I'll be addressing some comments now I think it's been 29 minutes so that's about a good amount of time for this um, lesson here so you can't see this but uh, I'll be going into my comment section and addressing some comments from my last podcast episode you probably can see this and it's i don't want you to see it so like the whole program or C C csp is the only one being recorded here so you can't see this side of me the behind the scenes but let me just drink some water
Yeah, maybe I'll add a timestamp so you can actually like skip to the part you like. Um, so there's this guy uh, at Saman Kutcher. You've been commenting a lot on the video. Like I think for every like 10-15 minutes you add a comment. That's a lot, by the way. You are the highest commenter in that video. Um, but let let me just review the um, comments. So me personally having an art job is impossible to be honest with or without AI. I actually tried, but in a place that doesn't have IP laws or entertainment industry, it you can. The English isn't as good, but it can't even be... Like, it's not even enough for pocket money, basically. But it's a cool party trick. So it's more of like... I work in ag agriculture. What is... what? Oh, now it's a much better... People will always eat. And I work on improving my drawing for my... For me, and I make not safer work. And safer work drawings for myself. And no one else is... And no one else, it's kind of liberating. Hope my English is good. It's enough. I get what you mean. Clearly, we probably have a similar background. Um, we don't have an art industry as well. Maybe here, thankfully, I'm now in the US. There is sort of an art space, but in developing nations, we don't really have that thing. Uh, like, we get more popular abroad outside of our uh, nations, our humble corrupt nations um so i do get what you mean um i'm not sure how to adjust it because i i do ag agree now thankfully i'm in a different environment where well the, the thing that can liberate you or that can sort of change things is working online so i do recommend like we're not stuck like you don't have to move to a different country to start making money like you can sell things where you are hopefully if you're not banned for example i think russia is banned from paypal am i, am I wrong you know because it's like for pol political reasons and stuff like that so maybe those things can affect you i think it's patreon is it paypal or patreon i'm not sure so in those terms of in in, in those regards maybe but now that we have the internet we can't you know like you can't wait i'll say this you can't wait for your country to change things as someone who's from um a shit stained developing nation full of corruption where we make most where we make a significant portion of our money from remittance basically we send people abroad which is basically my parents so immigrants and they send and they, and they send money back to the the host country that's a significant portion of our gdp i guess and it sucks. We're, we're basically like building up every nation aside from from ourselves because that's, you know, the system is effed up. And um, it's kind of sad. But I'm one of those people who's not going to wait. I'm not going to wait for like a revolution to happen for uh, me to be able to do art. You know, if I have to go abroad and thankfully my parents did bring me and my sister abroad. I was born abroad. I was born in Abu Dhabi, UAE, and then uh, I moved here to the U.S. And uh, the shit country I'm referring to, <laughs> I'm referring to, <laughs> is the Philippines. It's fucking shit. And it's so sad, like, there's so much talent, like... <sighs> there's a reason why people are leaving. Because... So much talent is just wasted on that. Let me just rant here a bit. Um... A lot of our politicians will, you know, talk about how, like, oh, like, how can we keep our, like, nurses, doctors, engineers, and basically all of our workers, and they always say this, they always ask the same question, but, like, why would anyone want to work there? The pay is horrible, you're not respected in any kind of way, and it's basically a, a, a nation led by a plutocracy. For those of you who know, for those of you who are part of the ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nation, who do you think is the the mental, <laughs> who's mentally behind, who's still colonized, mentally speaking, culturally speaking, politically speaking, you know who the weakest link is. I won't tell you, I, I, I won't, I mean, you know now because I'm suggesting it, but no shit why people want to leave that 
country and it, it's easier for me a little, a little bit because i wasn't born there again i was born in the uae and that's where a lot of like uh filipinos go through or go to middle east if not like any kind of uh, asian country like china like taiwan hong kong i mean i know it's the same thing <laughs> japan and obviously here are lots of like communities here in the u.s so uh, it does suck but you know that's why i don't really ha i don't really it's not it's, i'm not so easily led by the panic when it comes to like ai stuff i don't care how concerned you are or, or how right you are i just i come from a background where art is not even like respected like we have so many cool artists but more people from outside the country know about you than your own countrymen you know and if you look at how i'm ranting again if you look at like the shows sorry yeah sa mga pinoy dito wag kayo ma-offend pero like we're so outdated like all all of the the shows most of the uh, the best content you'll get is maybe indie films right well, even music any kind of art it has to be independently main, made because all of the mainstream stuff it's all to me it sounds like trash the, like the vast not all obviously but the vast majority like the baseline it's all just annoying making noise everything needs to have like a laughing soundtrack to it all of these sorts of sound effects like everything it sounds like a very gimmicky radio show and it's so unsaid like people want to I, I think the reason why it's so popular because it's a form of es escapa escapism and it just so happens it just so happens it's a very extreme version of it and coming from that noisy ass environment I mean sometimes you'll see people uh, say stuff like oh get me out of this country sure it's kind of a joke but it's also it comes from a genuine place like you can't improve there's a there's essentially a stereotype that why is it when filipinos replace filipinos with any with any kind of developing nation right why is it when we leave the philippines we become successful like in general and you know why there's one major thing that's stopping and withholding the success of my people or any people it's the the state and the the culture the corruption and all of that combined and again like like i mentioned there's essentially like this plutocratic oligarchic um system in place um and, and they they don't plan on changing things they're just like hoarding money and everything like and it's sad because i don't think my like the, I, i'm not gonna wait for all of these people to change not just like the states you know like uh people the government those types like if the average like if the vast majority of people support this shit anyway i mean they can complain but they still support the same people anyway in the same kind of gimmick gimmicky sort of uh strategies because uh, it's all talk like if you want to make it in politics i'm not sure if this applies to your country but you just have to talk you don't have to actually perform and that's sort of the standard that has been set so that's why no one really comes back it feels like when i go back i, I actually don't plan on going back and i don't feel like i want to go back because i don't feel like it's my home anyway <laughs> first of all again i wasn't born there but also like i don't feel safe there's only one place that i think is uh, very safe for me anyway it's like bgc bonifacio global city i think it's somewhere in tagig that's like the safest i feel because <laughs> i'm used to that environment in like abu dhabi um and um and yeah i just it's sad so when people throw this like ai sort of shit at me I, I, i'm like i just right now i have the privilege of being able to just make art and actually make a living off of it like just being here in the u.s i think it affects like the way your ad revenue is made right if i'm not wrong hopefully i'm correct on this and just the environment like people here are a bit more supportive even though there are sections of the society that are outdated i do think entrepreneurship is a bit more practiced and celebrated um anyway 
Next, next question. It's also from the same. Oh, let me just talk about Adam Duff. Because he did comment on my video. Man, you went far beyond where most people would understand this whole ordeal. Davi, you touched on a bunch of points that I haven't even considered. And I have to say, you have a such... You have such a balanced and health, unhealthy perspective. I really enjoyed your thoughts on this. Thank you so much. This effing Canadian approves. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think what inspired me to do that kind of commentary on the whole Adam Duff and Ergo Josh thing is... Let me just have some water. Was the the lean was just too strong on being against these two people. I'm not really a fan of Ergo Josh, but I, at least I watch Adam Duff, so I'll ignore the Ergo Josh part. Um, yeah, I just felt like it, it doesn't even make sense anymore, and uh, like I kind of got what Adam Duff was saying, you know, the whole uh work hard, even though it, it seems like a boomer take, like. I'm just like uh, again. I've talked. I've talked about a bit on my background. Like I'm not the type of person who's just gonna wait for things to change. If I'm set on this path, on living this, if my dream is this kind of creative lifestyle where I get to be independent, make art, and make a living off of it, you know, have multiple streams of income, be able to support me and my family, and just you know live a good life. I'm not gonna let AI or any. It's not just AI. Like anything outside of that. Like, I'm already hooked in on this path. And Adam Duff, in one of his, like, after videos or, like, response videos, I guess, you know, after he got, like, negative attention on this, um, he did mention his students because Adam Duff teaches, I believe. He does, like, a mentorship. And one of the things he mentioned, which is not surprising, is not... Not one of his students mentioned AI. And I know the reason why. And it was so obvious because they're set on the path, you know? I'm not saying you can't consider, and this is what this is what people don't seem to understand. Like when I talk about focusing, like putting your head down, focusing on your game, you know, having that laser-like focus, it doesn't mean you don't know what's going on on the, on the outside. It just means like, I don't have time. Like, I could spend time drawing and really making my dream this past sort of come true. Or I can waste time panicking about AI. If I'm set on this thing, then nothing is going to stop me. Like, I don't think... Maybe it's a very uh, a minority kind of viewpoint, but... You know, again... Uh, it's kind of suck, suck it to say this, but if you're going to lose a job to AI, like what exactly, I'm very curious on what exactly is your job, right? Now, yes, I, I'm not saying it's a good thing. It, it does suck, but I, I'm very curious, like what exactly are you doing? Like if you're just trying to fit a specific role that can be replaced by AI, by AI like what exactly are you doing? Is it like a commission thing? Are you losing commissions? If it's that, then... You know, because... Let me just drink some water. I'm so dehydrated. Jesus. If your dream is just doing commission art, that's fine. And if AI, the prevalence of it is affecting you, uh, your income stream, obviously it's going to piss you off and that's going to be... It's true that it's annoying and it's bad because it's not affecting your livelihood but uh, my recommendation would be to expand from that. Now, again, if that's not your dream, if you don't plan on, if you're really set on uh, like doing just commission art or doing like a specific thing, which happens to be something that AI art can replace, then if that's the path you've chosen, then that's the path you've chosen. But for me, it's just another thing to consider. I, I, don't, I don't see it as like a, a block way or like an obstacle to kind of go over through it's sort of, it's sort of like it's just there in the corner for me um so i, I guess it, this really depends on what you want to do like what exactly are you trying to do because for me since i'm planning to be um since my aim is to have to be independent I, i'm not really into i've done freelance not into it i want to be my own thing have my own base 
and you know be able to work from home i don't want to live my man cave right and because of that specificity anything outside of that circle just doesn't make sense so maybe this is more about a difference in opinion or difference in uh, circumstance rather um but but again even though let's say our circumstances are different and i probably won't be able to sympathize with you as much what are you going to do are you going to wait for things to change right i mean you can still worry about this you can still support card rts and their you know in, in in terms of like um regulating this whole space and that's fine but as you're doing that thing what are you doing in your own time and that's my issue and people can seem to make that sort of separation that sort of distinction you can still be against ai but you have to be doing the work uh, I, i mentioned this in the past episode like it sounds to me like a lot of artists like complaining about, about ai more than making art now that that single comment is going to piss people off and i know why they can't separate it let me just show you um i'll go back to my csp file here i already showed this but sometimes sorry to say i still see it in some of my comments like maybe you didn't watch the full video or you just don't understand it so let me let me inter iterate uh that concept again right so let's use a different color here because okay so there's the whole ai thing right ai art and the, there's your art let's use a line to separate both of these things you can still complain you can still sort of push for regulation when it comes to this whole side of things but as you're doing that what are you doing here that's all my point is i'm not worried remember the people i'm not i'm not referring to people who are or sorry i'm not criticizing people who do uh publicly oppose ai art uh, but at the same time they still continue their, they still continue they still continue on their own path they still do their artwork i'm not referring to those people because clearly they're somewhat consistent right they're against this thing and they just happen to be um because it in interferes with their own work because they are working right they're working on their thing my issue guys that's to be specific here if you haven't uh listened as well i'm referring to people who who complain about this thing but don't do this that's my entire point and i think that's what um adam is trying to say as well like the, the, even though it's not specified like i got the gist of it like he clearly he's referring to these groups of people who oh they're so loud about my ai my ai but what are they doing right like when they when they say this right now someone is going to say oh does that mean i can't criticize like oh my god you're so slow as much as a lot of artists have mental um issues when it comes to business like they can't even like they still think there are specific jobs and they, they're not very creative when it comes to making money they're also not creative when it comes to comprehension skills sorry to say let me just make it um another thing here business and comprehension a lot of us sound dumb sorry to say like we can't even slow maybe it's because we're very emotional i would give you that but we can't go all the all the way comprehend com, what comprehension am i saying it right comprehension hopefully i'm saying the spelling right comprehend yeah. business skills and comprehension skills like we immediately go to this either or thing right if i'm criticizing your lack of artwork and how it's like no matter how much you um Uh, protest about this concept right here if you're not doing your own shit like what are you even doing oh does that mean you're not does that mean we can't i'm not saying you can't protest remember the people who are against this but also doing their work they're not the issue the issue because do you know why they're working anyway so they're making progress and it just so happens they have an opinion on this thing and they're like uh, i i think regulation regulation is something that should be done um you know like ips yada 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 whatever um they're actually good because they're consistent you know like despite all of these they're still doing the freaking uh work 
my issue again for the nth time are people who comment on this but don't do this so that's it and yet yeah, just to re reiterate th these are the two common concepts business skills extremely lacking overall in our community and comprehension skills very reactive and um it's so dumb and i've i've gotten comments like oh like it's a in, a in any community like um this kind of like drama and shit okay i don't really care about any community because if, if, if i'm gonna focus on this creative space this art space clearly the thing that bothers me is what's happening inside the community it's kind of like saying let's say you're criticizing like here in the us when someone says or when when someone criticizes uh, the us let's say some kind of specific policy does it make sense for that person for the person being criticized to talk about china the issue is this specific policy that's affecting this country in this specific state now that's very that's very specific right it doesn't make sense when you're talking about that specific issue and then some mental loser starts talking about China or Russia or like Venezuela or, or Iran or Ven or Mexico. Like what the frick? Do you, do you know what I mean? Like they can't focus on the issue and that's because they have a lack of comprehension skills. This is low IQ behavior, by the way. I don't recommend you engage in this. Again, the biggest issue or a common comprehension skill here or lack of thereof is that whole black and white thing where they put words in your mouth. Like if I say I like pizza, they also, oh, if you like pizza, th th does that mean you hate, uh, does that mean you hate like seafood? Well, no, sh uh, well, what? You know what I mean? Like they immediately take that as a, as a, your, your, disapproval of a sorry your disapproval of a is clearly an admission that you like b well what that's so dumb um so like it, it's so sad like it doesn't matter how cool you are when it comes to your skills if you're like so dumb <laughs> and if you take things to like oh so what you're saying is oh my god let me just write it down because maybe people don't understand what that means these types of concepts so what you're saying is th these famous freaking words are one of the most annoying th any kind of variation of that variation of this is probably the most annoying kind of responses you'll get like you already have memes about this especially on twitter about this kind of response you say one thing and then people put like random sh shite in your mouth. Anyway, let's go back. Shit, 50 minutes? 53 minutes? I have a few more comments here to go through. Oh, I need water. <laughs> so I'm back in my like uh, dashboard. So you can't see it. I'll, I'll try to add the time lapse. Or sorry, uh, the, the timestamps because I know uh, this video is going to be lengthy, uh, encapsulating multiple topics. So I know it helps to have timestamps. So I do see some back and forth stuff with some of my commenters here. Okay, so a lot of uh. So let's go back to uh, I think Saman. Kutcher has something to say as well. Different comment. Uh, it seems you can't understand it because you are not a fan of artists. You are a fan of images and look of things. A lot of people's people like the artists and they are into art because of artists. The human that makes things. Okay. A waterfall can be beautiful, but those people who won't who won't spend a second too long looking at it, but a good painting of a waterfall to those people will be interested because it's a man-made image. They will probably wonder how he did it and how long it took. Uh, what's the story behind it? I hope this explanation is helping you see uh, from those people's per pers from those people's point of view. I see it. I see it. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I do both, actually. Like, sometimes I'm curious about, you know, why they made that piece. Like, what what's the story behind it? But also... Um, if something looks pretty, I'm just not 
Um, I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, you're right, I guess. If something looks pretty, uh, I'll be okay. I'm, I'm okay with it. Does it help if it's an actual artist? Obviously, because I can like check their profile. I can see more of their artwork. And it's nice if they have like a timeless video. Um, like you can relate a bit more. And um, I think the connection is obviously going to be much deeper if there's an artist behind uh, a specific piece. But I'm also not someone who will scoff at something because it's just like a pretty image. Like I don't always need to know like what's behind the thing. Like if something looks good, it looks good. Um, moving on. So that's the uh, a lot of professional artists. Oh, this one is from Blue Wizard at Blue Wizard. Blue Wizard. So a lot of professional artists are against AI. So using artists who are starting in their journey or are not improving or great by your standard is not a case to make. What is that? What I said. Come on, guys. Are you putting words in my mouth? At this point, you're just picking apples here. You do realize people are doing art are while defending art. In your opinion, that's not the case. Okay. So, uh, you do read. I'll highlight it. Well, you can't see it, but you do realize people are doing art while defending art. Well, no shit. I'm f sorry. I'm fully aware these people exist. Clearly my brother or sister that's not the group i'm referring to because clearly i'm annoyed at people who don't do art as they spend their entire um uh like timeline just shitting on ai art right i really i made a diagram of that uh i repeated it let me just show you let me bring out my clip study paint where is it this whole thing let me just zoom out oh my god this whole thing is a repeat of that uh simple diagram i did from that video so I don't really understand what you're trying to point out here. Maybe you didn't watch the full video, so I'll give you that. Um, okay. What evidence have you provided to defend your claim? What am I claiming, by the way? Uh, on X, everyone talks shit. So if you're shocked someone said something rude about Adam, then the app isn't for you. That's a cop-out. That's a cop-out. Well, well, if everyone commits... Um, well, like, let, let me just read it. People have no filter there. Again, your point of view is very one-sided. You say you get it, but really you're only saying what you think makes more sense to you. Well, your last sentence is the only one I, ag I agree with. Because obviously, I'm, I'm, I want to present the side that other people are not talking about, right? All of this like, oh my AI, oh Adam Duff is a fucking, like he's Andrew Tate, like really? Like it's the most common, like oh shit, like all of our artists or our artistic leaders are like betraying us. Like you I have, you have this, all of this like doomer kind of mind so like oh like we're so betrayed like it's fine but clearly i want to add a different spin a different perspective so you're right on your last sentence there but the sentence before that the second to the last sentence uh on x everyone talks shit so if you're shocked someone said something rude about adam then the app isn't for you do you think i'm referring to any kind of random comment like oh like adam duff is dumb i mean you get those comments all the time i'm referring to like the vitriol, the, the freaking aggressiveness towards this guy, which isn't new, by the way. I saw the same thing when people tried to drag a Ross draws down for using a Pinterest photo of a woman. Like, like this is a way to like normalize this kind of shit. Because you'll see this sort of a response to any kind of major issue, to any issue, really. Uh, like, for example, when you make a, when someone makes a mistake and when you question them on that mistake, that person who made the mistake will say, uh, well, don't we all make mistakes? That's called equalization. I call it equalization, where, where they try to equalize everything so that nothing gets criticized. Like if, we're, if we all experience um, uh, struggle, then there's no need to be, like every, it all cancels out, cancels out. For example, if you talk about the, um, um, the actions of one country, right? They'll talk about how other countries did the same thing. Clearly, there are certain countries that do more damage than others, right? Can we not admit, can we not admit that? Clearly, it's not always a balanced thing. It's not 50-50. I don't like people who say 50-50. Or who, ha who, ha who have the kind of mentality of equalization where everyone um, is at fault. Well, yeah, I, I made mistakes too, but did we make the same mistakes? Clearly, certain... Uh, there are some mistakes that are more worse than others, you know? People who can't distinguish, like, if one is a bit heavier than the other thing, 
if they like equalizing everything to the same level to me that's dumb and uh it's a way to sort of uh normalize uh the concept of just not calling things out you know so no i do agree with your last sentence um my view is one sided because it's my i'm presenting my side so anyway that's a rant uh so someone some guy re- responded jaff jaffet a sign on okay you're actually not doing something different from what he did first of all since you all are you you all on internet are looking for beef and actual problems i will tell you to not take personally what i'm saying to uh shit it's too long i'm sorry brother it's just too long well let me just read the last sentence last sentence i think it's more than ai now the community is on another level of toxicity and hatred and it's sadder when you notice that it's happening in every community i do agree makes sense um clearly there's something that's that has changed um like a, it's a cultural thing too yes it does affect other communities but let, let's not cope well it ha- happens in other communities too so if bad things happen in other communities let's just accept the fact that it happens here too is that uh, does that make sense obviously not um so here's from uh, at jerry lecor um personally i'm not a raging ai hater my view on it is that it's fun for non-artists but i think a lot of frustration is that most of the art courses in mark in is marketed towards how to get into the industry the same industry that is crashing now and replacing for ai a lot of the advice on how to make money with your art is just loose info that doesn't really help anyone i do agree that's especially that specific sentence especially that specific uh, a sentence plus youtubers are increasingly getting hacked so many artists including me are left in the void of what do i do yeah i think that, that that's a valid concern there um but i think a lot of us uh, well yeah you have to be careful of these sorts of art courses uh, like who's making them and what's their background now because you have like a lot of content on since i'm on youtube where um I do agree with the vagueness like they don't really break thankfully there are some artists who like break down they'll even break down their income streams like how much money they made on you know patreon youtube gumroad I, i'm really appreciate appreciative 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 of those videos but i know a lot of like i won't mention her but it's i know this one woman i don't even know what kind of art she makes but she does all of these videos on like how to monetize your art and i'm like i don't know what you do <laughs> so clearly i'm not subscribed because i uh, like who are you you know what i mean like if all of your youtube videos like here's how i judge focusing on just youtube um creators or artists on youtube uh if i can't tell if i cannot tell what their personality is via their videos i'm less likely to subscribe to them For example, even if I have some disagreements with Adam Duff, look at the way he does his videos. Sometimes he'll do like a product review because he's really into the whole tech stuff. Sometimes he'll do like a live stream of of him playing this game, Elder Ring, Elden Ring, Elder Ring. Um and then he'll do like his typical like therapeutic sort of a uh, moody art videos, right? Because he has like a wide range of videos, I get to understand what kind of person he is or what he wants to present as. So That's my recommendation for people who are struggling to find artists that you can kind of uh, follow and check out. For example, that's why I lean more towards Adam Duff than say Ergo Josh because I don't really know what like what does Ergo Josh like who is he? Like I don't really like he does when he talks to me or talks in his videos, I don't feel like a connection. Like it, it feels like he's sort of distant from the from his own work in a way. So, uh If you're planning to create your own content, I do recommend just going the more authentic route. Just say what you want to say and say what you have to say and that's it. I think that's a better way to 
and engage with the people. Uh, and someone responds at AE in you. Um, it being fun for non-artists is great actually. Even though I dislike AI, I can't help but feel happy for people who have fun using it. It's their art, not mine. They may they, they might only ever engage with AI art, but now and then it moves some people to actually try drawing painting out. I think that's neat. Oh god, I love both of your comments. Sorry. I, I, it's such a different perspective from just oh Adam Dub is a is a is a trainer, you know. Like you can see again, you can still dislike AI art. And uh, be concerned about like how ought to, how it ought to be like regulated, but to not see anything outside of that is like oh my god. Uh yeah, and then Jerry Lecco responds yeah the pixel scrapping training, selling marketing of it to non artists claiming you can be an artist with AI and an industry dumps dumpster fire. Collapse is the real problem, not using AI in general. There are people who would want to use it just to see what it can come up with. Yeah. Pretty much, the guy responds, AI in you. AE in you responds. Pretty much, it's, refresh it's, re it's refreshing to see other people say it too. Oh my god, you may be one of the best comments here. Uh, so from Vishal, um... You can definitely do that brush effect in photo. I think I mentioned this before. Um, it is very similar in terms of the visual look, but I think you have to paint stuff first before you can start mixing it in Photoshop. That's how I do. Um, and it just doesn't look as good. Although I'm sure there are some features in Photoshop you can't do on Clip Studio Paint. Uh, but if you say it's similar, then I'll take your word for it. Because it has been a while since I've used Photoshop for like painting. Oh god, hi. Could you tell what tutorial you saw to get that effect in Clip Studio Paint, please? Oh my god. I'm gonna have to do a tutorial on that. Uh, let me just write it down on my notes. Uh. Studio Paint tutorial on how to make cool brushes. Okay, I'll do a video on that. I'll put it maybe in the art process series as well in the future. So that is noted. Let me just uh part of that um i respect josh and adam duff for this is by move io or i0 or 10 i respect both uh, i respect josh and adam duff for being successful artists artists but they're two yappers of cosmic proportions abysmal takes and a lot of pretentiousness from both <laughs> and then mr manly guy says said on a yapping video do i yap i'm not Come on, Misty Manly guy. I mean, I, I do talk, but I'm not a yapper, right? I think what yapping means is... When uh, people talk in this mumbo-jumbo kind of uh, like therapy, kind of psychiatry, polit politician kind of vibe. Where it's a bunch of... It doesn't, it doesn't sound like... It sounds like... You know, some commenters have said uh, in their videos that it's a... Uh, shit, I forgot. It's so funny. It's like... Something knees, like... Gibberish, or... Basically, like, a, it's a kind of language that... It's supposed to be vague. Or it ends up being vague to the point where no one really understands what, what you're trying to say. You hear this a lot from politicians. Or from, like, again, therapists. Or any kind of, like professor that's in like academia like the way they talk it's so like the structural systems are a result of this pre precognitive you know those types of words like what can you speak fucking english? can you speak uh basic like english you know what i mean so i do get that 
Um, like, it, th- there's no realness. Like, it doesn't sound like you're talking to a real person. So, there's that. So, woo, chill, talk time. Thank you. Uh, so, this guy from Ivan Mat- Matveyev. So, Ivan Matveyev. Because you plan to make big money by being an influencer, artists should not fight against exploitation? Question mark. Yeah, sure. That's the problem with most of you YouTube art folks. You are in the first place. You are in the first place into fame and money. Art comes second at best. What's even the point of drawing then? Do pranks or advice on crypto trading? It's by far more popular than drawing. Okay. I'm going to take a second to think about this. <laughs> Ivan. Uh, Ivan Matveyev. Jesus. First sentence, quoting you, quote, Because you plan to make big money by being an influencer, artists should not fight against exploitation? Question mark, unquote. I'm going to go back to um, my Clip Studio Paint file. And you know what's going to happen, Ivan. <laughs> what the hell did I just say? Right? I know I... Don't lie to me. I know I mentioned this in the past episode. So what you're saying is, did I say you can't protest AI? Is that the takeaway? Huh? Clearly, that's not the issue. Are people who talk all this like negative shit on AI and uh, keep adding to this like fire of loserdom without making art themselves? That's the issue. Because there are plenty of people who criticize AI art. AI art and they're really pushing for like regulation and they're really following like what's happening with Carla Ortiz and her like associates there are people who do that but at the same time at the same time they're still focusing on their craft clearly they're not the issue clearly they're not the people I'm referring to because they're not the ones who are annoying anyway right it's the people who their entire timeline I, I, I mentioned this diagram in that episode People who focus on like AI art, but not their own art, right? It's basically become this group within the art community that's just so noisy. Like they're so reactive. That's the major issue. Think of the same people who are, or similar people who like to cancel things like those types. That's the issue. Those are the people that are annoying us. Frick. And thankfully I've watched like channels about my size. Um, for men and also women you know they they do like a a lot of character art i'm so glad that they have like a similar mindset to me obviously because it it affirms me but also because it's right (laughs) like they're not so panicky they don't have like oh like like they're vomiting and just freaking like like disappearing and everything you know they, they still know the concerns but they're not so affected by it and do you know why people tend to behave that way or these types of artists behave that way or this way it's because if you're so focused on your own path on trying to make it in your own way and you're you're trying to carve out your own spot what happens on the outside isn't going to bother you as much I already mentioned um, what Adam Duff talked about in one of his videos uh, concerning his students none of his students, students mentioned AI art do you know why? Because it doesn't matter if AR art is going to be regulated or not regulated, if it's going to continue to get worse, they've already decided that they're going to be artists. Do you understand? Maybe this is just something that's different. Maybe for you or for some people, it's just they don't have that like obsession with it. Um, or they don't have that sort of need like just to make art, right? So... If that's not you, maybe you just don't get it, which is fine. You know, we have a difference in like perspectives. Again, I'm talking about a specific perspective. As one of the commenters said, you know, I'm one-sided, which is true. I am one-sided. Um, but yeah, you did the whole thing. So what you're saying is, okay, come on. Um, the background music by George M.F. Washington. The background music has been a bit annoying lately, man. The same beat with that woman singing for hours. I'm... I did make 
uh, a mix of the same artist, Kai in Blue. And um, yeah, I did diversify my music a bit. So now I have like, I have one mix where, or a mix where it's four songs from that artist at different types. Um, so hopefully that helps. You'll see it or you'll hear it in like longer videos and stuff like that. So I did take note of it. I did take note of it. Uh, so let me just check my recording time here. 115, not bad. Uh, so someone is asking for clarification. It's by at Crown, Crown, Crown of G. I'd like it if you explain more in depth your opinion in one fourteen fifty one. Okay, you describe a situation where someone criticizes you for using AI as reference, and your comeback to that is, "Where is your artwork?" Is that what I said? Now I'm curious. Wait, let me just read the whole comment. Like, I'm sure some people do just complain about the issue. But it feels like very specific straw man you use to get back at people who dislike AI because of the the harm it's doing to artists. Okay? So I'm just trying to understand your point. Like, it's important to keep making art if you are an artist, but fighting to push back against the biggest case of art theft in history seems mad important if you want to keep rights as artists. Mm. And if you could provide a source to some of those people that only complain about AI to the point where they ceased making art themselves, I'd like to... What do you, do you expect me to re record every single artist? Okay, come on, let's be realistic here. Them up because my on my Twitter feed, I feel I feel, on my Twitter feed, I never saw these these people. Although my feed is heavily curated, so I can see how I could have missed them. First of all, I'm not gonna give you a list because I don't have a list. I don't jot down these people. It's a vibe. It's a, it's a group. For example, do I list different issues but similar vibe? Um, those who shot on Ross Draws, do I know every single person who shot on Ross Draws just because of his reference issue? Like, it, it's gonna be a group if it becomes so big, it's no longer an individual or a set of individuals, it's a community at that point, it's a, a collective. So, using this as like, oh, come on, okay. The last thing I can agree with you is the polarizing tendency of people on social media, like the thing you've said about people that support, uh, Palestine uh, immediately being labeled as supporters of Hamas. Okay. I get it, but I'm so. Uh, let me just check the video out. Because, um. I want to make sure I know what you're referring to. I'm just listening to it. Right. Okay. I know what you mean, but I think you, um, okay. Let me just read your first few sentences. You describe a situation where someone criticizes you for using AI as reference and your comeback is, what is your artwork? Well, the context is, again, I'm referring to people who don't make art, right? That's why I, I asked like, oh, where's your artwork, bro? I think that's what, I think that's what I said. Where's your artwork, bro? The reason why that's my response is, a lot of these, these people are not working on their craft. So I think uh, you've expanded that to other people who do criticize AI, but at the same time are working. Again, I've mentioned this. They're not the people I'm referring to. Okay? So hopefully that issue is settled. We need to learn how to separate these sorts of groups. Right? And just to reread uh, uh, the, the following comment or sentence. Like, I'm sure some people do just complain about the issue, but it feels like a very specific straw man used to get back at people who dislike AI. Again, you're expanding me saying, the whole, where is your artwork? Where is your artwork? I'm not saying that the people who dislike AI who are working, because if I say that, they're going to present their artwork. So it's going to make me look dumb. You know what I mean? So again, spe specificity on the, the, the group I'm referring to. 
oh yeah the twitter tutorial it's gone i'm not sure why i can't find it maybe the guy deleted it but i'll, I'll make my own uh, it's concerning the brushes like how to make uh, a specific kind of brush in clips to the paint yeah someone has also mentioned that oh like where's my uh like where are my other social media platforms i did open up kara i think that's where i'll be posting and maybe art station too um and by the way, I fixed the issue with Kara. All I did was, because I had an issue with the icon, the icon, the profile icon. So what I did is I just went to my phone, downloaded the app, and I changed the profile icon there. Because whenever I would change the profile icon in my uh, PC, laptop, it just, it would end up like glitching. Like, um, like the thumbnail would not show, but I fixed it. So yeah, I, I, I need to find a place to post my artwork because I have like a bunch of work that's not even shown. So I want obviously to be able to see that in one go. And I think Kara is the place uh, for me. Because um, it seems nice. Um, it's, it's a bit curated. Uh, I'm not sure what the feature of Kara is, but I think it's nice. Um, and also ArtStation. Instagram, I don't know. Twitter, maybe. Although... My plan for Twitter or X is to post like more not safer work stuff because they do allow that kind of content. Um, and for more like uh, safer stuff, I think Kara and ArtStation. ArtStation you can a little bit, but it's still risky. So expect that. Um, I'll, I'll be pushing my social uh, media platforms uh, when I have, when I've posted enough content. But I need to make sure I know what kind of content I should be making on those platforms. So this one's from Alexi, Alexi Rayu. Are you depressing about them better than you or about perspectives in life? The fact that older, more experienced artists are better, better off is understandable. But the future, yes. But look, the fact that AI images can't be copyrighted has kept designer illustrator market still open for humans. So that's one. If you work on it from the young age as you are, there is no reason why you should have no future at all. Second, there are parallel paths like design illustration anime manga comics yeah there are still people working there and because intellectual property needs to exist ai won't replace second you already have almost 11k of us subscribed to you that's a good start also so there so there are obstacles and hardships but if you are good and love what you're doing there is no reason to despair just yet uh, but imagine when an older guy like me sees younger people drawing well and actually learning from you I agree it would be much sadder for me if i wanted to catch up Unless you gave up, which, unless you gave up, of course, which I hope you don't. Oh, okay. Um, don't worry, I'm fine. I'm not, I'm not depressed when it comes to that regard. Um, uh, I think in the beginning of the video. Sorry, or from in that podcast episode. I think it was the Olympics that kind of triggered a depressive side in me. Because, you know, just, just seeing how far I am. Like you mentioned it, I, I know, you know, I'm, I am making progress, you know, I have like 10k, that's something, right? But it still sucks, you know, um, seeing people succeed as much as is great for them. It's also a, a reflection of how you're not them. Oh my God. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> Just thinking about that. Um, it's sort of a pro and con of seeing the success of others. The pro is... You're inspired, like, number one, like, you're very um, proud of them. Uh, it's good that they've they've found their way and they've succeeded. And also, number two, it, it's very inspiring and it, and it makes you want to do your own thing as well. However, the con that comes with that, the negative thing that comes with that is, it it does remind you of the, the gap of where you are now to where you want to be. And th thinking about that, I think it's hard to not be depressed. Um, so thank you for that um, comment. It is kind of important and uh, it's helpful. So thank you. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not that depressed, but it sometimes it does get to me a little bit, but uh, it's not that bad. Again, I am hooked. I am focused and I am set on this path. So yes. Uh, you want to know my age and a different comment i think i mentioned it but i'm not saying what exactly my age is but i'm in my 20s how about that 
uh, AE and you. Um, and no, I totally get it. I, I unsubscribed a while because I didn't vibe with any videos he was putting out. I feel this about a lot of art content nowadays, but it basically just feels like ads for his paid stuff or algorithm optimized engagement farming. I don't like wasting my time. I know what you mean. And I know the artist you're referring to. Because <laughs> again, another like to expand on that uh, on that issue. It doesn't feel like I'm talking to or I'm following. Like I want to be able to follow someone's journey, you know? Like where they are, what they're doing, right? It just feels like you're just... I mean, I know you want to sell stuff. I mean, I want, I want to sell stuff too, but I mean, who are you though? Like, you know, in this whole art space, people want to know not just the art, but the artist, right? And I think that's why people are unsubscribed or are not as um, fans of Ergo because the way he does his video, it's a bit different from maybe or perhaps how he did his earlier videos where you would see him sketch on his iPad, right? Uh, once he started getting more subs, I think something changed, and um, and you can tell like the the better his equipment got, like yeah, he has better equipment, like better tech gear and everything, which is fine. It looks nice, but I think he likes some people. You know, I've I've read these sort of comments where he likes the idea, or it looks like I'm not saying that's what he actually thinks, but it looks like he likes the idea of being an artist rather than being an artist. So, I think it's because he doesn't post, like, personal stuff. Or it doesn't feel like I'm... Or he's having a conversation. It's always, like, in his deep voice. Right? In his bassy voice. And it's a bit too high. You need to lower that, by the way. It's too much. Um, I used to do that. Um, but thankfully, people, some people have mentioned that, oh, shit, it's a bit much, Dave. So, I did change it. But, yeah, just... Yeah, there's just no connection. Um, and yeah, sometimes it's more of a vibe thing. I just don't feel like I vibe. Like, uh, it's, for example, Ross Draws. I do know he's a bit of a positive guy and I'm not always into that, but I still follow him even though he doesn't do content anymore. I'm not sure why, but the reason why I was so interested in just following him is because I just kind of know, like he's not very personal in that regard where... He breaks down. He breaks down what he's doing for his day. You know, like he does keep a bit of that distance. Um, like he knows what sells and stuff like that. But he has like an artist vibe to him. Um, and he he does like sells courses on YouTube, right, or on his like site, whatever. He has like the whole Nima project. And yet, people like me like to follow him because I think it's the the, the vibe like I feel like he's an artist and I feel like I'm on a journey with him you know so I think that's the the trick lots of comments by Saman Kujer too much uh, uh, but I, I get it I think you were responding for like again every like 10 to 15 minutes Uh, yeah, it's a lot. Okay, some fighting in the comments. Interesting. Well, at least you're nice and you're not so mean uh, to each other. There's still some healthy space. So yeah, I think those are the the the, the major stuff. I'll, I'll be skipping most of it because it's a lot. Um, so that's it for the the comments from the last episode. One of my most, it's still like mostly liked, but let me just check the the stats for it. Um, eighty seven percent, eighty seven point four percent likes. Um, so basically, it's eighty three likes against twelve dislikes. It's not bad, but clearly a hot topic, but yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure what to talk about next. I think that's it for this. Uh... Art pop.
podcast episode. Let me just go back to my clip studio paint. And I want to make this the main sort of a thing right here, right? Let me just uh, move you higher. Oh, there you go. So the main topic was knowing what your core is. Um, who are you when you're pushed into a corner? Who who are you when you're like what's left when everything outside of you and your other thoughts are kind of attacking you? Find your corner, find your center, find your core, uh, and always start with art, with a love for art. Then follow success or think of success and work on success in art after, right? And learn to prioritize these two major things and that's pretty much it uh hopefully this helps you in some way okay. it'll and i'll see you in the excuse me next episode um again i'll try to do this like once a week to sort of a uh, recap and stuff like that and talk about like something of something i've learned uh, in the past few days and you know and also to answer comments and stuff like that so hopefully it helps i'll see you in the next video um, bye.